Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. If you're new here, welcome aboard. If you've been around for a while, then I'm glad you're back. Today we're going to be talking about Windows Server 2008. And this is a continuation of our Windows Server 2008 training videos. If you want to know more about Windows Server 2008, please check out my online class. It's http colon slash slash classroom dot jackstechcorner dot com. It's very inexpensive and you'll learn even more about Windows Server 2008 and how to manage it. In this particular video today, we're going to talk about WUS or WUS. That's a Windows Update Server. Why is that important to us? Why do we really care about having a Windows Update Server running in our racks? Well, if you manage a network like I do, we have 900 workstations. You may have more. We have 900 nodes on our actual network. And now if each of those nodes would go to Microsoft's update server every Tuesday or Thursdays, and it would pull those updates. Let's just say we have it set up for Tuesday or Thursday, and it's pulling all those updates for 900 nodes. Your internet speed would go through the floor because it's so much traffic on your network that you don't need. So there's a better way to manage your updates and you have access to approve what updates are going out to your workstations, which are very important. Why? Because you may want to test out a couple of those updates to see if they're going to mess with your software to make sure that they're going to be compatible before you push those out to your clients or to your nodes. So let's go ahead right now and get started with Windows Server 2008 WUS. Or Windows Update Server. First, to find Windows Update Server, we're going to go down here and click on the toolbar or the toolbox. It says Server Manager. If it's not there, you may also find your Server Manager under the Start button. Go to Administrative Tools, and you'll also find Server Manager listed in there. We are going to click on it here on the taskbar. Once we do that, our Windows Server Manager opens up. And what the WAS, or the Windows Update Server, is, is another service on your server. So we would be adding a role. We want a new role to be working on our server doing something for us. Now it is recommended, not necessarily, uh, a, not a necessity I should say, but it is recommended that you run your update server on a separate server in your rack. And make sure it has plenty of hard drive room. We've learned this early on and years ago when we were building servers and we built our first Windows Update server. It will pull a lot of those updates down for you. And they're going to go on to that server before they get pushed out to your nodes. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of storage space used. So have plenty of storage space. Don't make this one of your oldest, older servers in Iraq. Make it pretty uh, pretty spiffy, you know. Uh, if I have recommendations, I would say at least um, 12 to, uh, probably at least 12 to 24 gigs of RAM, if your server can handle that. Um, probably at least a terabyte hard drive would probably be a good recommendation. Uh, if you have to go less, I would say don't go much under 500 gigabyte, because you may have to clean it off a lot. Um, and the best processor you can possibly put in that server would be uh, recommended to you. So with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to add the update server. So just click on Add Roles. And if you go down through these roles on the bottom here, you'll find where it says Windows Server Update Services. Or it used to always be called WUS, W-U-S, Windows Update Services. Let's just check that and we'll hit Next. Then we're just going to simply click on Next and Install. The Windows Server Update Services 3.0 Service Pack 2 Setup Wizard. This is going to be your next step. This is going to pop up on your screen and we have to walk through this uh, setup wizard. So we accept the uh, licensing terms and click Next. Uh, you, it says you do not have the following components installed in this machine. It tells you what they are. Click Next. Store updates locally. Now you could either store these updates locally or you can restore these 
on a file share somewhere else. As long as everybody has read privileges to that file share, then it will work. Next. And next again. Use the existing IIS default website recommended. That is what I would recommend. Or you can create a new Windows Server Update Services. If you are using the IIS default site, if you're using that already for um, serving on web pages, you may want to uh, create a Windows Server Update Services website. But I'm just going to use the default. And then click Next again. And we will go ahead and actually install this and set up the database. Now this, as this is working, this would be a good time to talk to you a little bit about how this actually works. What actually happens is when you have the Windows Update services running on your server or on a server in your rack, all the computers will end up pointing back to that server. And there's a lot of ways we can do that. We can go to each individual workstation and point them back. You can write a policy and point them back. You can write a script on the computers to make it point back to grab your updates. Every update that comes in, we take one day a week actually and sit at the server and approve certain updates for testing. And we pull those down to basically a test machine just to make sure those updates are not going to interfere with our software. If they are good, then we let those, we just click on them and we approve those and let them push out to the workstations. It makes it really easy and it keeps your bandwidth usage down because you're pulling your updates when you want them to be pulled. Most times in the evenings. So you want them pulled late at night, maybe when there's nobody in your office or when it's a slower time in your office. Pull them at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and then they'll be there for you to approve when you're ready to approve those. So I hope that makes more sense to you on uh, using the WUS, the Windows Update Services. Now as you see here now it's configuring the database because it's it's a database. It's building its own database because you have to get these updates down. They're stored somewhere that to be stored in a database so you can approve them or deny them. So that's where they're going to be stored at. At this point we can see that we have completed the Windows Server Update Services 3.0 Service Pack 2 Setup Wizard. So click Finish. This will finish installing our service on our server. And a lot of people get so confused with service and server. But a server may have many, many services, as you know. And then we have this configuration window come up. Before you begin, let's click Next. Yes, I'd like to join the Microsoft Update Improvement Program. Let's say, well, let's close this. And we're going to minimize this out of the way. Okay, let's say no, we don't want to do that. Okay, synchronize from Microsoft Update. That's where we want it to pull from. We want it to get our updates from the Microsoft Update service, just where you would normally get those. This down here is if you want to synchronize with a different Windows Server Update service. Um, maybe you have another one in your network somewhere, maybe another building, and you want to pull those back. That is how you would do that. If you're using a proxy, a proxy server when synchronizing, I'm sure you would know that if you are. Um, we do not, so I'm going to say on just next. Start connecting. Um, this would actually start the connection, so let's see if we can start the connection here. Now that we're all synced up with the Microsoft Update server, let's click on Next. Now, this is where it starts to get really interesting because you got to start telling it what kind of updates you want to pull down. Now, it says, download updates only in these languages. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're using other languages, you would pull those. I am only using English in our company. Now, you can specify the products for which you want updates. Now, there's a lot of different things in this new update server, um, such as Microsoft Office will be in here. There's a lot of different update packages or products that we can choose, and we're going to go down through this list real quick just to see what's in here. If I click on Microsoft, 
that will give us everything, but we don't use everything. I would rather kind of go down by hand so we don't get all those updates piling on your server that you'll never use. It just doesn't make good sense. Let's start going down through these real quick. Um, such as the Bing bar, Bing desktop. We don't use any of that stuff. Let's go down through here. Uh, developer tools and runtimes and, and uh, redistributables. That's if you're actually programming anything. You see it's got Visual Studio, Visual Studio uh, 2008. So if your company is actually uh, working on programming languages, that might be something you'd want. If you run email servers, you may want some exchange updates. There's some expression. Forefront. You know, when I teach this class live, we sit and we talk about this stuff. And some of these products, a lot of people don't even know exist. Like HPC Pack, you know, uh, Compute Cluster Pack. People don't even know that it is around, so they don't even worry about that. We can just go down here a little bit further and start looking here. Microsoft Security Essentials. You know, that is if you're running a security server. And here's the meat and potatoes of the update services. Office. Let's just check it. Pick all the office packages. Now, you don't have to. You may, in fact, see that you don't use Office, uh, like we don't use Office 20 or 2002 XP anymore. We don't use 2003. We may have some 2007 on our network, and we definitely have a lot of Office 2010. So we'll keep those. Silverlight, you know, a lot of things run on Silverlight nowadays, so pull those updates down. SQL Server, very important. We don't use 2000, but we do use 2005 and 2008. So I'll leave those. Let's go down through here and look for some more stuff. Virtual servers, if you virtualize your uh, server, and we can talk about that another time. That's another video, actually, that we're going to be working on down the road. And here's your different windows. Look, here's Windows 7, Windows 2000, if you have that. We do have Windows 7. We do have Windows Server 2003. Windows Server 2008 R2. And we'll do Windows Server 2008. So you do have to kind of have like a basic inventory of your network. And you should know what's on your network by now. Especially if you're working at this level and you're working on your server, you probably know what's on your network. If you have any Vista, good luck. I hope you do not at this point. Windows XP, let's click uh, XP64 and XP. Microsoft Works, let's hope you don't have that on your network. Okay, so that is everything that I can see, all the products that I maintain on my network. So now we're just going to go and click on Next. Now, what kind of classifications do we want? Critical updates, that's probably pretty important. Definition updates, that's important. Drivers, eh, you don't really need drivers for the software we're using. Feature packs, security updates, very important. Service packs, I do like to check because I don't want to have to go look for service packs later. I want them to just come to me and I'll approve them when I'm ready to approve those. Any tools, update roll-ups or updates? Eh, we'll take updates. Click next. Now, we can either synchronize manually or this is where I was telling you about. We can automatically synchronize. We're going to automatically synchronize. And I like to do mine in the AM. So we're going to go back here to, eh, we'll say two, and make it on a odd hour. So many network administrators make this mistake. Here's the mistake they make. They set everything on their network for 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 3. You almost have to build a master schedule because you may have different events running on your server. Uh, you may have uh, different tools running on that server or different things happening. Like We have automatic uploads that run at night. Uh, we have a lot of different things that happen. We don't want everything happening at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. You're going to crush your network, and there's not even anybody there. So I do keep a master schedule, and I do believe in staggering mine uh, updates or synchronizations or whatever they are, um, you know, downloading the latest virus patches for your antivirus software. 
you want to stagger that stuff out through the evening. So everything's doing a little bit of time, giving your network more resources. Now, if that makes sense. We're going to do a first synchronization at two. Um, let's see, we can make this odd. Let's make it uh, 218.06, and we're going to make this AM. Synchronizations per day. One is plenty, folks. As long as it synchronizes and pull those updates down, you're good to go. Click Next. Begin initial synchronization. I'm not going to do that right now because of the time uh, for the video here, so we're not going to do that. Click Next. And uh, to fully configure your system, you should explore the following topics. Using SSL with WSUS or Windows Server Update Services or WUS, Windows Update Services, however you want to say it. Uh, creating computer groups. We'll talk about that in the future lesson. Assigning computers to those groups with group policy. You can do that. And configuring auto approval rules. So there's some rules you can work on. So click finish. And our update server is now configured and ready to start pulling those updates down tonight at 218 whatever we said 06 a.m. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to initially install the WASUS or WAS it's WSUS or as I pronounce it WAS WUS whatever it's the Windows Server Update Services. Now if you'd like to learn more about these now that you got your feet wet a little bit and you said wow I can understand these videos and you can learn from this it's very easy to follow along with my online class where I take you from A to Z oh don't stop the video yet where I take you from A to Z and walk you through every part of Windows Server 2008 that you need to know to get it up and running and to be a server administrator once you're done you get a certificate which is great to attach with your resume send it out and they know that you know Windows Server 2008 and you will learn more about the Windows Update services as well as you'll learn how to uh, manage those updates as they're coming in I'm going to teach you that and we're also going to teach you more about how to set up the workstation once you join that to your domain and how to set that workstation up to pull those updates from your server instead of the Microsoft update service the normal way and uh, crush your network so again check out that class there's a link right here on the screen now it's http colon slash slash classroom dot jackstechcorner.com once again it's classroom dot jackstechcorner.com no www very inexpensive it's worthwhile to uh, take it I've had a lot of positive feedback and a lot of people have already uh, uh, received their certificates and are on their way to managing networks one thing I can tell you is once you sign for that class you're on it forever folks I'm not going to take you off I have no reason to take you off of it and as I add material you'll get an email saying there's new material out there and you'll be eligible to come back anytime there's new material for the Windows Server 2008 course so thank you very much for watching I am Jack I'm the host here of Jack's Tech Corner hope you watch some other videos or if you're new once again please click the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube videos. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.